a Q, will be a Q&A and it will be around uh, the subject of current events, conspiracy theories related to COVID, how to decipher all, all the various theories that we see, um, how we can make sense of it, what's the correct conclusion, and maybe something around uh, the, the contention between Biden and Trump and what's the context of that. Mm. So I suppose if we start off with um, what's your analysis around the, the coronavirus, what's your impressions, what's the kind of things that currently held among people's perceptions of it, uh, how much of it is conspiracy, how much of it is fabricated, um, how do we decide for the current events? I, I think we could cover that last time, but let me just summarize. It's, uh, the only point which may be a matter of, of discussion is that, uh, is the virus really coming from some lab uh, lab experiment which were, were botched and, and, uh, and some kind of, of, of maybe uh, uh, a bat flew away from this Chinese center of, of research and so on, and infected, or it is natural. Uh, the, the balance of evidence is, is more stronger today that it's natural because coronaviruses infest, uh, well, are well known <coughs> to be infesting bats with various types. And it's very well possible that such a virus may jump to other, other, other animals. And uh, uh, it's rare, but it can. And uh, uh, we have also during this year, we have the coronavirus jumping from humans into animals. We have seen that now the, the, mink, the, the mink industry in, in, in uh, what's his name? In, um, uh, what's the name of the country which produced mink? Um, uh, north, north, down, uh, north, northwest of Germany, what's the name of North of Holland? What's the name of the country? Uh, Sheikh, anyone remind me? I think it's Sweden, Sheikh. Not Sweden, no, no, the country in, uh, adjacent to Germany and Holland. Norway, Denmark. No, no, go down a little bit. Oh. Hmm? Uh, down, down, down from where, Sheikh? Hmm? It is in Denmark, Sheikh. I'm just looking it up, uh, the mink industry. That's been... Uh, Norway, that's had, that's had a lot Den of Denmark, yeah, Denmark, yeah. Denmark, yeah. Denmark. Uh, Denmark. Uh, so Denmark. Uh, uh, that came from humans. And then it, it, it possibly have mutated in the animals. So they are afraid it will come back to humans in a mutated version and the vaccine will not be working. So they're exterminating the whole bunch or all, all minks or planning to exterminate at least a good portion of them. So that's, that's proven. That is, so I think it, it, it's most likely natural because also there are many testimonies where people have visit, visited that, uh, that center there uh, in uh, in uh, in China in Wuhan itself, <clears throat> which is not far away, by the way, from the from the from the uh, wet market or uh, uh, wild animal market, is uh, and uh, they praised really the, the precautions and the, the technology used there and the protection and so on. But even they, it can be watched. And the Chinese came back against that accusation that they uh, started the virus uh, experimentally and it leaked out. Uh, claiming that the Americans who, there was an American delegation there for some kind of a conference, uh, that the Americans have got it from their own weapons labs and planted in, in China. Accusation, counter accusation, which did not help, uh, obviously, but if the Americans are attacking them and claiming they are the cause of the disease, then obviously they, they, they will feel, uh, obviously, liberty to attack the Americans. That's concerning the source. I mean, definitely, it's a virus, definitely, and the number of dead and so on. You just need to check in, in your street. How many people have been uh, been killed by 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 COVID and so on, and also these multiple corroborating re uh, reports from from all the uh, various countries and so on cannot be <clears throat> cannot be all denied and as a conspiracy. Sometimes in early phases, uh, someone go to a hospital. Uh, in a backyard or, a, or the back part of the hospital, which is empty, which is understandable because all the hospital facility has been transferred to the emergency section and the COVID section. So it's understandable that you find a section of the hospitals empty because there's nobody there and they're not receiving any patient because everyone is concentrating on the, and, and the, obviously they cannot use every room in the hospital. They have to use special rooms with isolation. So all the staff is somewhere in a corner of a hospital. And this section of the hospital is essentially the same. Look, hospital is empty. Nobody is here. There is no, 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 no COVID and so on. Well, I have seen some of these videos uh, and things like that. And there's yeah. some people, yeah. And some people have obviously the, 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 the hobby to, to fabricate and make fantastic things. That's just yeah, so in, in this kind of scenario, you, you have, um, so for example, you have all these various government uh, entities. So you have China, you have America, and they're at odds with each other. Now, the narrative is people say it's a pandemic. It's a scamdemic. It's kind of like uh, 
a coordination. It's very similar to if you remember twenty. No, this years ago. this is quite remote. What what for every crime you have to find the motivation. As I said, say last time, unless someone is completely mentally deranged, and the mentally deranged who is in the street and suddenly have the desire to kill someone will kill spontaneously and mostly will be apprehended. He will not be planning and so on because anything planned indicates a rational mind. A rational mind is usually having an intention and purpose. What 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 is the reason for China and uh, or let's say for. They make a they make a projection. They say, okay, this is part of a new world order. Yeah, I know. But, any but, name you want. But, Bill, but, Bill, okay, Bill fine, fine. Bear, new new world order. Why why should should China and America cooperate in that? They're all controlled by the same entity. Some guy, a James Bond villain, let's just say. No, no. That, that, we know that the Chinese leadership has been infested by Zionists and is pro-Zionist and have been moved against the year claiming that they are a danger for that. That's the Zionist claim. And they were able to brainwash the leadership there uh, in return for that because the Israeli, especially, and the Zionist uh, oligarchy in the world, they have, <clears throat> they have been... Uh, uh, massively helping China in getting all American secrets, military secrets. Besides Where's the Chinese, the proof this, then? Where, hmm? where's the proof of this? Deep then? state, Rush is called this deep state. No, no, no. 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 Look, look no, no. if we're going to rebuttal people, uh, we need to. No, no. We have, you have, you have, the people do not follow all the events and they do not put to put the puzzle together. They have pieces of puzzle and they fill the rest with their imagination. So the Israeli are definitely having having a uh, having a, a, a say in the Chinese leadership in the sense that we are your friends and Muslims are a danger for you. Look at these oh yeah, there are Muslims and and suppress them, etc. In return. Uh, of uh, uh, partly, not only that, but also in return of supplying military secrets. For some, almost every military year, they get the, the, the Israeli from America. They they send a copy and whatever pretext to China, either claiming it has crashed like a plane or something like that. And reality, you will find it by uh, reverse engineered in China. So the Zionists are definitely having an effect in the Chinese leadership. But by presenting them as a, we are helpful for you and we are recognizing that uh, the same the same argument uh, uh, was said uh, Zem Rosenberg uh, said in the fifties when he leaked the, the the technologies and the secrets of the of the hydrogen bomb to the Russian, he said it, it must be done otherwise this uh, this uh, enormous weapon will be used by only one country and it's dangerous for world peace. There must be some balance. And he regarded this as a moral motivation. And this was just you. So maybe it's really he's morally motivated. The Israeli could pretend to be morally motivated that we would like to have a strong China to balance the world and then uh, improve world stability. That's one aspect. Besides, obviously, the exchange with them benefits and, 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 and military secrets and many other things. That's one aspect. Other aspect, Russia is controlled by Putin, who is really uh, a man dependent upon the Zionist oligarchy, which they have taken all the economy of Russia. When the Soviet Union collapsed and they started privatization, the Jews were there ready to take over, partly with Western help and Western, their, their brethren in the West, but partly by their own uh, uh, deep, deep state uh, involvement in the time of communism. And they just jumped on all possible assets. So the major oligarchy there is Zionist oriented. And Putin is working that, although he pretend publicly to be not pro-Zionist and pro-Iran and so on. And he was able, I think, to fool the Iranian. I think the Iranian are fooled. They, they are simple-minded. They do not know how to analyze things properly. They go by how things, how they appear, rather going a little bit deeper. Again, thus, you need to have the mindset of not to be conspiracy-minded in an absurd way, but also not to go by, 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 by uh, public exposure or public information only. You have to mix both and also historic facts. So what what is the benefit now? Now, this is it, 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 they, they definitely, but these are not controlling the oligarchy of the, is not controlling. In America, they did not, they were not able to, to really to split from the rest of the Western oligarchy, which is the old imperial split and so on, because they are a British construct, Zionism. In the world scale, is a British construct. It is, has been started really by the by the evangelical in, in in America as a religious movement, but translating into politics and establishing Israel and so on is mostly a British work. Later on, America inherited Israel and adopted it for various other purposes. But leave that aside. So they have influence, and when they succeeded in 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 uh, recognizing that there is a really uh, considerable uh, Doubt and considerable grievance with the general public against uh, against the establishment in America, they their man 
Trump, who appear to be a populist and willing to complete uh, the, the Zionist agenda in Palestine, which is all what, he, what they wanted from Trump is abolish the so-called two-state solution, uh, recognize uh, Al Quds as a, as a state uh, as a as a capital of Israel, and force uh, vassal countries in the Arab world for for a peace, which is uh, completely uh, according to the Zionist design as a first stage you now establishing big, uh, great Israel. That's because they was they were able to get Trump using the popular the, uh, disgust into power. The same in Russia because they got Putin, but the military is not with them. The deep state in Russia is not with them. With this, uh, but Putin is way too intelligent and being an intelligence officer uh, to appear a Zionist in front of his own people. It's not like that. He, he, he plays the game well, not like the, the, the foolish Trump who is publicly too, too, too Zionistic and publicly anti-establishment. Putin does not do that. He does it if everything is done for the benefit of Russia, Mother Russia, and he goes very cautiously step by step. So, so the, the, the Zionist influence, what the people call the Dajjal and Dajjal conspiracy, the Zionist influence is based on these persons and based on American power that they were able to split some of part of the American public, a considerable part, and win an election for their man. There's only one man. Obviously, there's a there's a considerable section in the in the in the Republican Party which are, believes in the Zionist agenda in the sense that uh, bring Christ back there, but they don't say it clearly. There, there is, but it's not enough to control power. They relied on one man. In Russia, also they are relying on the oligarchy, which is much more reliable, really, because Russia is the, the leader, the leadership of the of the Zion, international Zionism is now in Russia, the oligarchy. But the one who expressing it internationally is Putin. But this is not an, an force which, which will manufacture a pandemic. And why manufacture? What the benefit for them for manufacturing the pandemic? The pandemic obviously damaged their Trump, which they would have loved to have him for more years to settle things in the Middle East completely. The pandemic obviously caused some problem to China, put China under pressure, and also got Trump, who was, who was more concerned about his own re-election and his publicity, to be hostile to China. He was in good relation with China. and moved certain faction who are anti-Chinese for various reasons, religious reasons, imperial reasons, to uh, uh, get the Uyghur problem on the, on the surface and they start hostile action and also tariff action. So it, it doesn't seem that spreading the pandemic is benefiting really the Zionist agenda. It doesn't seem. So so the, 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 the secret hand behind the pandemic and the spreading and it, what it's causing to Europe and America, it's causing, it is causing enormous damage. It will break their back. You didn't see it yet because they are fighting, they're printing money, they're doing all these tricks, which will ultimately bring the debt load to a level that has to collapse its own weight, which is coming in the coming few weeks and months now. Now that the super crash is on the way. The super crash is on the way. It cannot be prevented anymore because simply... Printing money is not going to do anything anymore. The central banks are not able to do anything because all these uh, interest rate incentives are not working because interest rates are almost zero. There's no incentives for, for, the, for the banks to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, give people money because there's no interest, except the poor consumer with their credit cards, which have 25, 30%. That's actually, the banks are living from that since the first, the first leg of the crash in 2008. All the income of the bank essentially is from that. There's no real investment in any other area because the real investment in the other area will go according to market interest rates. And they are too low for the banks to be attractive. So it's better they print money and give it to the consumer public. But this is a, a loop-sided economy, just consumer having money to consume, but, but, but manufacturer and, and producer and service provider do not have uh, enough money to invest or cheap money to invest. Will not will not sustain an economy for a long time. It works. It works for some time. Things will go uh, go plod along. Debts will be reworked and refinanced and so on and shifted in the future. Like they have been shifted for centuries. Like for example, the debt of the British government is essentially the one they took from the in the establishment of the uh, the first loan they took from the uh, Bank of England, uh, three or three or three and a half centuries ago. It's still the same one. It's just being rolled rolled forward, rolled forward forever. It's not paid. It's not paid. So they pay the interest and then uh, what is not paid is added to the principal and it's being rolled. So the British government is indebted to the Bank of England since three, more than three centuries. So they were rolling it, but now it is not, it is not, it is not, it is not feasible. So it will lead to that collapse. So clearly, 
the secret hand in, in the world is not having this FF like the Jal or the Zionists do not have interest to bring all these to collapse, for, at least not for the time being now. They still did not complete the agenda in the Middle East. They did not control the Middle East completely and smash any opposition and establish Great Israel. They did not, even if this claim that's the main agenda or that the Jal is hidden somewhere. The re really, the people, the problem the people is that they try to uh, analyze something which is really there's a secret hand behind that. It's the hand of Allah. That's the secret hand behind. It. It's a divine hand behind that. It is not. It is not a Zionist hand, nor a, a Western hand, nor a even Islamic hand. <laughs> Muslims are much more uh, incapacitated and poor. But this is sent sent by Allah for them. It's an opportunity for them to assert themselves and benefit from it, and uh, and and pick pick the banner and go forward quickly if they have any 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 rationality in their mind. So instead of going, say, okay, this is, it seems to be the hand of Allah is behind that. They are unable to get out of it. The second leg will force them to borrow, at least in America, independent of us, Biden comes or, 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 or Trump stays. There's still a small probability that stays by instigating a war and delaying the tactic, but it's very unlikely. The, just assure, the, the, the trillions more which will be printed will will bring the debt bubble to collapse. The debt bubble just needs just the nail which pricks it for it to explode. It has become known that the, the, the number of the, the size of derivatives, there are different estimates from 150 trillion, which is the lowest one, but the most reasonable by economists and people who know the insider banks and so on is a half quadrillion, 500 trillion, to one point something trillions, a uh, quad, uh, quadrillion. I mean, it's not sustainable. It's not, it's, it's impossible. You cannot push it in, in the future. You can't push your future. It, oh, just, you need just a brick. One, one major world bank or one major, major insurance in the world collapses, or one major country collapses and cannot pay its debt, for example, then this debt will be called and accounting must be closed, books must be closed. Another, this, the one who has to pay the part of the debt has to call some of the derivatives and these derivatives will call another derivatives because they are, they are like, 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 like debt instruments based on another debt or based on a third one, several layers of debt instruments. And then you have then like the domino effect, everything collapsing. Now this is quite imminent. So it's better for people instead of conspiracy theory to think seriously, how can I survive the crash? The coming crash. <laughs> that's that's much better. Will be much better. Independent who is behind the crash? Is it the Dajjal <laughs> or is Allah? So anyway, it's Allah signed behind. Yeah, nothing happened in the rest without Allah permission. We know Allah permitted to happen for certain purpose. I I believe it's for for the Muslim Ummah to get an opportunity to to jump and and jump start. Uh, the, especially since it is, look, it is interesting. Look, for example, in the year 23, I think it's 23 or 22, the Lausanne Agreement runs out, 99 years, uh, which settled the scores after the First World War. The, the scores and the borders of the First World War, they were settled only for 99 years, the, the treaties and so on. Uh, still, Turkey officially has, has rights in, in these Muslim and Arab countries and so on, which are postponed for, uh, for 99 years. Obviously, the empress at the time thought in 99 years the world will change and we, ca we can't continue. The same like they thought with Hong, with Hong Kong uh, until China changed radically and forced them to give up Hong Kong. Uh, originally, they rented it for 99 years. That's all what they got. But here, here it failed because there's a powerful entity which insisted on having Hong Kong back. And, but they were able to negotiate the two, uh, two system, one government, one country solution and so on. But this will be also abolished. It's, it's known since the 90s that it's going to come in that direction. There's no way they have two systems in one country. It doesn't work. It's just only a temporary solution. And the British wanted to save their face that they went that they do not let the people down and so on and they do not betray democracy but they knew from that day that it's going to happen and they can scream as much as they like so so that uh, so that's coming the Luzan agreement is ending and the settlement of the first world war and all the peace treaties and so on are running out and the question what will be after that what will be which new treaties which new arrangement will be there so for the muslim country especially for turkey there is an opportunity to to uh, to, and also for Iran, but I, I, I have the feeling, openly speaking and frankly, is that Iran, uh, after the death of Khomeini, did, is not the revolutionary entity which it was. 
it seems to be some some internal factions which are American agents, I think, or I would say, like for example, Rafsanjani. How come that Rafsanjani is a very close personal friend of King Fahad? And by the, by the, maybe because he's a big capitalist, he's a billionaire or millionaire, and they have the, one, the largest uh, uh, pistachio farms there and so on. But this being a, a millionaire or billionaire itself is not bad, but this makes you susceptible to financial pressures and thinking about markets more than about ideology and principles. So in his time, and after his time at Khatami, there was some uh, approach and, and uh, reapproaching Saudi Arabia and so on. <coughs> Uh, against my own advice to Ayatollah Iraqi and others, this, they, these will betray you and stab you in the back. But it seems to me there are factions in Iran which are what they call them, the moderate. I think they are American agents. And they are not working for the benefit of the Iranian people, nor for the Iranian revolution. They are definitely not revolutionary. Maybe they think, so sometimes you become an agent because you think this moderate way is the way which will get you out of trouble and so on. Some people think this way. It's not necessarily um, an agent is the one who is being paid for, 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 for treachery. No, he can be very well thinking this is the correct way of going forward. And with the result that they, they, they made they major blunder, well, several major blunders, the one, the biggest major blunder was obviously uh, the first one was, there were many small blunders, but the biggest, uh, this, Mass, most massive one is definitely the the uh, acceptance of the government who shall, uh, who shall be installed by the American in Iraq. That's where they lost really legitimacy and the meaning of allegiance and so on. In 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 contradiction to a considerable number, although a minority of the scholars who have the bond of that, then their involvement in Syria, in the side of Assad, under the claim that the Assad regime is, is, a, is a bulwark against Israel and things like that. This is all nonsense. You don't, as a revolutionary regime, an Islamic regime, support someone who kills his own people. A bulwark against Israel or against China or against the devil is irrelevant. These are, the principle has to be made one by one, one after one. And unfortunately, possibly motivated by sectarianism, which they don't say publicly. We don't know. All of this is not relevant. Relevant is that the action standing by is a blunder. And the blunder, they paid the blunder, the price for the blunder. Loss of almost 30 billion dollars invested in Syria in vain, because this will all evaporate sooner or later, uh, overextending beyond your capability at this, at this stage of history. Uh, uh, exciting opposition or even inside Iraq because in that time if they have focused on Iraq at least and try to tune that government to be really serving their own people at least in the basic services but that did not happen they were busy in other aspects and this government is, is a disgrace for the people and for, for the services with the result that the people are starting to rebel and, and, uh, and uh, obviously even uh, hostility to Iran is increasing, even especially between, not even, especially to, in, inside the Shia camp. So they did not gain the Shia in, the, the Shia in Iraq, they regard Iran as, as trying to take leadership, which they didn't deserve. The leadership should be in Najaf, not in Qom, for example, and things like that. So now they are they are in a squeeze. I don't think they will be able to benefit from it. And then recently in Nagorno-Karabakh, they got stuck in a, in a very problematic situation. They were not with Azerbaijan. Because Azerbaijan, because previously they have they have issues with Azerbaijan related to uh, other Azerbaijani nationality, and they, they don't know how to treat their minorities properly. I think, and other reasons, following the collapse of the Soviet Union and all of these things, and uh, this uh, this uh, made Azerbaijan a good base for Israel for a possible attack against Iran that make Iran more hostile to Azerbaijan. And then in the war with, between Azerbaijan and, and uh, instead of being the side of the Muslims, despite of these Muslims being bad and having a relation with Israel, they, they sided half-hearted with Armenia, but couldn't do anything to Armenia. So neither they were clear with Azerbaijan, nor there were even some supplies coming to Armenia through, through Iran. With the result that the other at the border, because that area is all other, not only Azerbaijan, but also outside other, they blocked that supply and caused some problems there. So they are sitting between the chairs. With the result, they did not benefit from there anything strategically or, 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 or symbolically at least, while Turkey obviously benefited considerably. Obviously, Turkey was forced to pay a price because Armenia is, is hostile to Israel and Azerbaijan is friendly to Israel. And Turkey is internally in the heart of the leadership hostile to Israel, but publicly they still have relations with Israel and they're still in NATO. 
So they have to play the game. So they could not prevent, for example, Israeli contingency and people coming there and celebrating with them. So you see a Turkish flag and Israeli flag next to it. A very, very, very troublesome situation. But still, they can't argue themselves out of that. For the moment, Israel is not fighting here. They are what's fighting here is the Armenian. They have expelled the, the people of Karabakh out of Karabakh. And we are returning the people to their own, their own place. It's a very involved, very messy situation because uh, the Turkish leadership since they abolished the Khilafah was obviously anti-Islamic, anti-Arab, and pro-Western, and pro-Europe, pro and tried to become a member, uh, to join the European Union for so many times until they have now become disillusioned and completely alienated. And most likely they will, they will, they will withdraw that. I think it's gone. I think the attempts of Turkey to to join Europe is gone, it's finished. And even the Turkish people have recognized that, that the European are not accepting you as long as you are a Muslim. And the Turkish are definitely Muslim. They are not going to give us Islam. Islam. Anyway, even if with Ataturk, I don't know that they, the Turk, Ataturk did not say, uh, did not appear to be anti-Muslim. Well, they said, we have to save Islam from bad government. The last Sultan and last Khilafa, they made Islam a bad name by their bad governance and so on. So we separated religion will stay pure in the masjids and the mushaf and the government, which may be messy, is away from Islam. So Islam can't be blamed for that. This is the usual secular argument. And it worked for many people, many people, even many musallin and many people who are regular in salah and so on, took the bait. So the Turk, Turks, Turks, Turkish identity is based on Islam. There's no way. They tried, obviously, it's secular to, to make it like a nationalistic ideal, uh, uh, identity, uh, change even the language, many words which are for Arabic origin, their, their, uh, their academy, their academy of the language is trying to substitute with European words and so on, until someone say, some people could say, the Uthmani Turkish, even if it's written with, with, with Western letter, is difficult to understand now. Half of the words have been changed and things like that. They did that. That's, that's, that's their program. They, they, are, they are Kafir. They are not Muslims. They are, they are young Turks. and the majority of them are Kafir and secret Jews and so on. But they did it very slowly and intelligently. So Turkey has, a, has, has to deal with that. But I think with, with more success like uh, Karabakh and also success for possibly future success to become in Syria, the Islamic country will become so overwhelming that these, uh, these young Turk uh, action Will, will be just swept away, will be completely removed from uh, from history, inshallah. But we don't know. We have to wait and see. Yeah, the, when you say about Syria coming success, what do you mean in terms of um, that that Turkey has set itself support the, the Free Syrian Army? Say this is finished. Assad has, Assad has to go, and the Turkish, the Syrian people have to do their own election and their will. And wouldn't then, that be serving the Americans? Because this is another thing. Because you mentioned about no, no, it will, it will not serve. It will not serve. It will serve the Ummah in in the final calculation. Why should be serving the Americans? Because even this, for example, if if you talk to some people, some some Jamaat, they might I know, be, I know, I know, uh, especially the Shia and so on. Yeah, they say because this is bulwark against America. No, no, forget Shia. I'm talking about ideological Islamic groups. They put people into rigid camps. So Turkey is an American camp. Iran is the American camp. Uh, you know, you 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 know where I'm. No, no, that's a, I, I know. No, this is all nonsense. This is not how how history works. What does it mean Turkey is an American camp? Turkey is an independent country, and even Sheikh used to say in the field, when he said Abdel Nasser is an American agent, he said, but Turkey is an independent country which is which is negotiating and playing the games of benefits and exchange of benefits and so on. The leadership there are not agents. They may be satellites, but not agents by choice, because they, they think that would give them better protection and better outlook of, of asserting themselves. They never became like like just agents. So claiming it's in the American camp in that sense is 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 an is an excessive claim. Besides so that, that 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 all this analysis of the sheikh was in the time when Turkey was completely controlled by the by the seculars and by the Kemalists. But this is the disappearing now. Both the majority of the people and also the leadership is clearly uh, Islamically oriented. So this this is part of a wider question then. So. You mentioned at least, that at least feeling that. wise and intention wise. Mm -hmm. so, so you mentioned about analysis and looking at the history of uh, events and then try deciphering uh, various channels. What kind of channel channels can we use? Because you we are talking okay. about a lot. Okay, of Let, let's ask these people. Let, let's ask the people. Okay, uh, Turkey is the American camp. What who, in which camp is is, is Assad? An Islamic camp? Well, obviously, I mean, people people will. Um... No, no. Let's ask him a question. In which camp is Assad? 
he's, they'll say he's an American camp. Sort of, if, for example, an, an, another faction in America. Yeah, I mean, no, they'll say that uh, America will play multiple. Uh, no, 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 America has factions. Now we see America really have internal conflicts and factions. Okay, that's, any doubt. that's had become now apparent. It was in time past. It was not clear, and the Hizb did not make it clear in the seventies when say that about the, the cooperation of America against Britain and so on, uh, etc. Et while America publicly appeared to be with Britain in an alliance and the NATO and things like that, because I, I don't know if the Sheikh they, they did not recognize at the time or what, whatever the situation in the world, he still looked at Britain as as uh, as, uh, as as a state as an entity. Actually, Britain has become like a virus. Britain meaning the oligarchy of Europe, the royal family, the British uh, imperialist, and the British uh, 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 aristocracy uh, morphing into, into capitalist. And these have substantial ownership and position all over the world, and they have substantial control of the, of the multinational companies. You see what I mean? So that, that one is have also deep penetration in America. And that's what people misunderstood in time past when LaRouche, the, this famous intelligent, uh, executive intelligence review, was talking about the British and the British influence in Washington. People did not understand because he, was, he did not articulate it properly. With the British, he means this faction, which is uh, essentially the international uh, uh, imperialist oligarchy. He himself, being a Catholic, believes that America is the, should be the beacon of freedom and the human rights and so on, and should develop the world. And this is his ideology. He believed in that. For example, he was arguing, for example, that uh, on the uh, along the seaside of Saudi Arabia, a, a chain of nuclear reactors to to uh, to, to, to kickstart an industrial revolution by desalination, producing energy. Uh, 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 mineralization and developing further. This is not an idea of an imperialist, the idea of an idealist, of a Catholic believer. So, so, but he could not articulate himself such a way that the common, anyway, the common American people are very simple minded, but the rest in the world did not understand this analysis. But independent of that, his analysis is more correct than the Sheikh's analysis at the time, all that has some idealistic aspects, because he thought the deep state or the American capitalist can be or uh, basically believer in the constitution and the human rights. They are not, they are not. Some of them, but the majority of them are not. At his time in the 60s and 70s, yes, many of them. For example, many, many, many big capitalists, for example, were approached by, by, by uh, advertisement companies and the uh, part of that was showing, uh, showing women with my bikini. So he refused to say, no, I'm not going to use human, woman body, sell woman body for, for, for. but this, this generation is extinct. Have, they have, barely you have any one of this type anymore. So the world is going advance, advancement toward complete uh, monetization and money worship, and believing only in money and nothing else. And all these values and so on have, have evaporated and gone under the pressure of international uh, international uh, um, monetization of debts and all of these things. And also the, the, the weakness of the church and the weakness of religion and complete erase of religion from, from public life and religious value and morality. They're still hanging on some blabbering about democracy and the human rights and so on, but this is all just, it, has, it is clearly fake. It doesn't show any clear conviction a deep conviction in the heart. It's very clear. This is it's, nothing is there. It's just used to, to, to fight other entities who ha do not have the same rights that we have, or what we claim to be having, just, just to, to have an argument in internationally, to give something for the common people, something which look like some moral justification. Because it's still, until now, the mass is very difficult to tell the American masses, listen, we went in Iraq, actually, we want to control the petrol. We don't care about anything. No Saddam, no, all this is nonsense. Don't believe it. They cannot say that to the American public. Yet. Maybe down the road, maybe a few, few decades from now, the people will be ready for this. Oh, we, we have nothing and no interest there. To the hell with them and with, with human rights. If we cannot get the oil for cheap and we cannot get it by force, then we forget about it. That's it. So go back, back to the, so that's the analysis. It, uh, this is the meaning of Britain and the oligarchy. So Britain is still there, but the British establishment, the, the British oligarchy is, is really the one which is investing in America, investing everywhere in the world. And they were controlling the transnational companies. These, their, their principle is that there is an elite, hundreds, or hundreds of thousand billionaires around the world. They are from such an aristocratic and a superior stock, an intelligent stock, and they need 
like a billion of people working for them all over the world, and the whole world should become one one country. It's no, no sense of nationalism because it is the world and humanity should be led by this elite. And this elite should be the one ruling because it controls the money. And it keeps controlling the money with iron fist. For the Rothschild, for example, they have control of money since now almost 200 years and others. They keep it exactly like aristocrats, become the monetary aristocracy. This should be leading the world. And when it's more economical to invest in China, then we transfer the the, the, the product, the, the machines and equipment to China. If it's in India, to India. It's irrelevant. Don't worry about the English. Let them die. Excuse me, Sheikh. Excuse yeah. me. Uh, but, uh, I think you answered your own question because uh, earlier you were saying uh, who who who's going to be benefiting of the of the Corona and the lockdown yeah. and the and the and the demolishing of the economy because the reason obviously everything starts in Britain because this is. Yeah. It's, this is the place of Dajjal mm -hmm. uh, and universal. No, no, it's not the place of Dajjal. Okay, uh, this is my opinion. This is, this is, my, this is my opinion. No, no, it's um, not. It, so, it, it, it is not in their interest. It's not in their interest that the economy of the world collapses like this will bring. This I, will. I, I, I think. It, no, I, I, well, I understand what you want to say. These people are the one interested in in Corona, and it will serve so, their so, agenda. So the universal credit is going to be universally controlling little people who are going to have no businesses left, they're going to be uh, totally destroyed and uh, they will be forced to, to get their vaccinations. There'll be total control over these uh, 5G towels. So we're going to be, uh, so if you don't listen to me, then we're just going to press the button and you're going to get no food, you're going to get no ag exit to, uh, to medicine, nothing. So the total control is there, the, the, the the, the, the desire to destroy everyone is to gain the total control and that's that's the part of globalization and and the, and what you're talking about the 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 the, the control over the all people yes. in, in the world I, I, that's not no but but the, the problem is that the, the coronavirus the virus itself is not a good tool to do that there is this, it is done by other because this one will because uh, in such a pandemic, the serfs, the worker, in the tens of millions and hundreds of millions in the more import, most important countries have uh, to be paid by, by printing money. Printing money will demolish their, their dominance of, of the control of finance. They have to control the finance, but, for, but money has to have a value. The moment money collapses and the debts, because they are, how did they increase all these empires? By, by borrowing, taking for people's money, sucking the other people's blood by 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 by, by the false dollar, dollar and so on but do it gradually in a measured way so it can be sustainable and can be rolled down the moment is accelerated and you have a crash then the whole world changes the whole equation of, of power change shake your microphone stop working they see the danger. For example, in 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 two thousand two to three, uh, after the uh, the the dot com bubble crashed, they needed to do some some uh, some rearrangement of financing, but it's less severe than two thousand eight, and will and the coming one will be even the severest one, which they cannot fix. And they asked, uh, "Was the name of the uh, 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 chancellor of the treasury at that time, uh, who became prime minister after after Blair was his name?" Uh, Gordon Brown. Gordon Brown. They ask him, you could have done this and this and this and so on, because they sold gold and so on in the open market and uh, they did certain action. Say, yeah, he said, we could not do otherwise. We were we walked until the, the border of the abyss. We looked on the abyss. We have no choice. Either we jump in the abyss or stay back. The stepping back forced us to sell gold and do these and these things. There was no other way, at least in his world of understanding. So. It is not in the interest of the oligarchy to bring situation which can bring the whole system to collapse. Yes, slowly, control and so on. Someone could argue after that happened with the divine hand, say it is just, just irrational to believe that some people will start a pandemic and so on. If a pandemic happened, then they will try to benefit from it so in their control. Yes, they will try. And this clearly, you see, for example, why, uh, for example, the, the Republicans in America are objecting to another, uh, another, uh, uh, what they call uh, another big uh, uh, bill of uh, two and a half or two, three trillions because they're afraid this will bring the collapse quickly and then because they are the really representative of the cream and the oligarchy and then, then the, the control of the state and the control of the oligarchy will be gone 
it will destroy it completely. So it is, is, is I think, besides, also because these stories that Britain is the country of the Dajjal is not true. The Dajjal will not come from Britain. According to the hadith, the Dajjal will be coming from Middle Asia. It's like Kazakhstan may be the country of the Dajjal, and he's developing there slowly. People talk about the system of the Dajjal. The system of the Dajjal is the Kufr system, the capitalist system. That's what will produce ultimately the Dajjal will be the peak of that. It's not the Dajjal somewhere hidden. I know that some people claim that the Dajjal is the Sa Samari who must say, go your, or your life will be, don't touch me. And some people claim he's still alive until now. Some people claim Al Khadr is still alive. All of this is, we should not, we should discount all these stories. These stories are all irrational. They have no rational ground. They rely on one word in the Quran or some statement in the old, in the Old Testament, which are questionable even in 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 in, in, the, in the translation and questionable in their expansion and so on, in uh, going to in an imaginary world. Besides, if you go into this, this one problem of assuming such a theory as a good explanation is that it will handicap you from doing the correct action. Because what if, if let's assume it is conspiracy of the oligarchy and so on. So what will be the action? Refusing masks, refusing the vaccine, it will make things even worse. Because this the, the pandemic is here definitely. The claim that the vaccine is having these microchips is, is outlandish. Even these nano particles or nano are not so sophisticated enough that they can control humans. Maybe long, as I said last time, maybe down the road, maybe decades or centuries down, they will be like the Borg. In, in Star Trek, yeah, which are connected by 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 micro particles and so on, and assimilate other uh, cultures and so on, and take the best out of this culture and incorporate it themselves. Maybe something like that will emerge, but it's all imaginary. It's not. It's not. It's not currently now. And there's also no. no, no I said last time there's no really re re reliable and good evidence for for that 5G is is really able to switch anything or do the damage that people claim. Yes. I blame the authorities and everything that they disrespect the public. They don't do the necessary experimentation, animal experiments supervised by independent uh, institutions, possibly from various countries to refute these ideas. Some of that has been done, but it's done in academically esoteric corner and the uh, uh, scientific elite and the technological elite tend to look down on the common public as the idiots, they don't know anything. That's a mistake. You should not look at the common public has proper concern, proper concern and they should be addressed. But the reaction will be they are going to control us with, with, the, with, the, with, the, uh, with the vaccine. Okay, so we abstain from the vaccine, the, 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 the epidemic will continue, killing more people and more people, and possibly giving an opportunity. Because if it continues for some time, the probability of uh, a substantial mut uh, 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 mutation is there. There is a set of frequency of mutation known for viruses and so on. If it stay longer, then there's very well possibility that it will mutate into a vicious one, which another vaccine is not possible. So it will be an in, in, in ever, in ever ending cycle. And then you have then a complete collapse where they even printing money will not be enough. The people will be dying of then starvation and fighting each other in the streets. You will have some of these American movies who show you the world after a world war, where people are becoming like living like almost in a, according to the law of the jungle. and. Uh, killing each other and fighting each other and so on for, for, for crumbs of bread and things like that. But now it is not by a world war, it is done by, by, uh, by, by the virus. It's, it's, it's just, just, it's just not, I think it's, it's going overboard. It's not taking all evidences and all aspects and all historic aspects and all other aspects. And also it, 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 it seems to be having some kind of a strange taste of uh, a little bit of atheism in the sense that it, everything is the world controlled by America and by the oligarchs and by money and so on. No, the, the world is still controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Still, definitely. And just a pandemic like that could handicap a major power like America and cut its leg and put it in its side and weaken it in such a way that we can jump in that, giving us an opportunity. Why not interpret it this way? It's the action of Allah to give us an opportunity to move forward strongly and staunchly. And benefit from that. There is a possibility. That's also a possibility, and this is founded probably on on the fact that independent who instigated it, who miscalculated, and who did bad experimentation, individual, or it is just a bat which was sold uh, to, to uh, for, for the Chinese to make soup and and turned out to be having a mutation which infected humans and started a smashing family. Whatever it is, it it can't couldn't have happened without Allah's permission. And Allah permitted to happen in this situation for certain purposes. 
someone who believes that, for example, these prophecies, uh, or this numeric one, which I find not very persuasive, that Israel is to be, to be terminated in a couple of years, or the beginning of the fall will be in a couple of years or something like that, 70 years after the establishment or something. Like that. I, as I said, I, I don't believe this numerics is very persuasive. It's not a, it's not a compelling numeric. It's a possible numeric. Then this needs some preparation. Without this pandemic, it's not feasible. How in two years the situation could change that that Israel could could be could be uh, destroyed. But now it's very feasible, very very feasible, massively feasible. Oh, because of economic collapse, economic collapse, and also uh, also military involvement and issues like that. If 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 America is an economic collapse, for example, and the, their military is mostly infested and the aircraft carrier has to be grounded then they will not be thinking about uh, going into a local war or a limited war. And the nuclear war is out of question. Why a nuclear for what? Which purpose? Against China? China carried late nuclear enough to annihilate America and make it non, make, uh, kick it back into, into the Stone Age. So it doesn't make any sense. So it will be only proxy wars between what proxy war can be initiated now when everyone is busy with the pandemic and the economic collapse. So you take all of these things. Don't, don't just look from, from one angle. That's a possible angle. I must say it's not a possible, but it is, it is a, it's a remote possibility. We have to go with the most reasonable possibilities and the most reasonable explanation, one after one. So, so would you say, so, so to kind of uh, navigate this stuff is start from a conceptual basis uh, rather than going in with a predisposition? Because what, what happens is it's like making a soup. It would take five, ten different cons uh, conflicting points of view. Stuff that actually negates the laws of physics, yeah, negates laws of ration. Yeah. In fact, if we apply those same principles to our own belief, we have to, by necessity, throw away Quran and accept that Muhammad Sallallahu could have been a fake. Yeah. You have to. If you really think about it conceptually, yeah. if an entire society can collaborate on lies and can bamboozle us to that extent, how do we know that? No, no. This, that, I, th I think that people who claim there's no pandemic at all is fabricated. Uh, these, these, are, uh, these are mentally deranged. Uh, they should be locked in a mental institution until the pandemic is over and given a vaccine by force. If, if there's a vaccine for, for retarded... <laughs> no, no. I mean, but the, the conclusion that the pandemic has started now, we are shocked and the oligarchy is trying to benefit from it by, by gaining control. So that may have some merit, but this question why gain control this way? Why, uh, why actually is really a vaccine a way to, to distribute these micro particles? Anyway, if there's any micro particle which could be initiated or, or, in, or, or kicked, started by, by uh, 5G uh, is available or something like that, we would have known scientifically the preparation. We know that it ships. They put chips in your leg, for example, if you are accused of terrorism, so they can trace where are you, etc. Uh, sometimes they plant it in the body, and sometimes they put it like 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 a, a watch, which is uh, which is locked, and you cannot take it or something. Or if you take it, you are immediately the police will come to you or something like that. That's why that. But this is a large chip. This is not a, this is not something which can be put in an injection. Not yet. I'm not saying this will not be possible in the remote future. Not yet. The same one. If we have some, I read just recently some disturbing experience. They call it disturbing. I don't see it disturbing. They were able to edit the, the, the genes of a baby monkey, uh, in, in a, which is still in the, in, in the egg level, uh, such that the certain genes which are uh, controlling the mental capability has been, has, uh, has been doubled, or I don't know how they did it exactly, so that the new, new monkey will be, uh, obviously in vitro, in, in glass, the new monkey would be more intelligent than 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 the average monkey, and they injected back into uh, into uh, to the mother, and uh, that monkey is born, and they are now doing tests on it. Is his name Fauzan? <laughs> this this people say regardless chilling because they think this will be will open door to do eugenics and uh, and breeding of humans and things like that. It could. If it's used, if there's a political will and uh, oppressive regime, they may try to use it. But some people regard the chilling for some other reason that maybe man is becoming like God. It's not true. This is just breeding. You did not create the DNA. The DNA is done four billion years ago and started created by, created by Allah and, and kick started the evolution. That's gone and forgotten. You are not able. And that's it. There's no danger for any belief. Can you create completely out of nothing? Uh, uh, 
out of raw material the uh, uh, and uh, a fly like the Quran says Nadina they cannot create a fly even if they are coming together no they can't create a fly all the stuff fly they can edit the fly and modify fly we do all the time modification we are breeding animals yes we use classical methods we bring a bull a new bull with certain features and let it examine as many cows as possible and the cross breed and so on and over generation now that we can do it by genetic modification faster that's it so what's chilling there? But there will be people say, oh, no, they will be able to, to, to produce, uh, uh, what is his name, uh, the, the, that beast, uh, Frankenstein. Frankenstein is at the door. Well, Frankenstein is still far away. It may come down the door in a botched experiment. Yeah, it's, it's not a, a completely impossible. It's not completely impossible. If these experiments are done and without control and without proper way, etc. No, it's possible. But it's not now. So this is uh, the same with 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 with, uh, with with nanoparticles as well. Nanoparticles are now used. We have nanoparticles used to encapsulate medicine and so on as you, to to make it solvable and can be given as injection or intravenous. That's very good, and it has helped to many uh, to 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 uh, realize many medical breakthroughs with with those substances who are very effective, but they are b badly soluble to make them soluble. These are nanoparticles. But this is a far cry from a nanoparticle which will make you move like a clone, like in Star Wars, Attack of the Clones. Far away from that. Far, far away. This needs further developments which may take decades or centuries. Or it may be faster, but it's still, we are not at that stage yet. But at that, that level of control and that level of sophisticated nanoparticles, if ever, because to have a nanoparticle which has a receptor for for uh, 5G or whatever G uh, to come later, and uh, to to uh, to have sufficient many many uh, many uh, microcells which can make a, a decision and then send the necessary current to the brain to affect your behavior, this is a very tall order. This is far away. I don't think it's even feasible. It's not even feasible. And even that, what will be the control? To make you like a zombie, so that you work and don't complain? That's a very complex behavior. It's, it's not easy with nanoparticle. That may be doing by genetic editing in the birth phase, or by, by injecting certain, like, uh, uh, this dissolved nano uh, uh, nano substances like like not giving you from to time an injection of, of a material which makes you all the time high and happy and work like a zombie and high and happy and uh, and that it will be released slowly in the bloodstream so all the time happy uh, like an idiot and working with that complaint maybe something like that 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 appears to be reasonably feasible around the corner. But this will be they have to be given continuously in, injection after injection it's kind of like one, one month every two months and so on like uh, like contraceptives have to be taken monthly or every few months as an injection or something that continuously after some time it it, it 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 goes away and there will be people in the society refusing that and there will be rebellion and killing in the streets and shooting and so on it will have backlash to get it going it may go in one country other countries will it is it's not very rational but you could imagine that you could every generation you have this kind of thing it's kind of like what they call messianic conspiracy theories people um try to navigate having a lot of uh, uncertainty in the future it kind of spawns these kind of things the yeah, most important yeah. thing for us i think is really to navigate this uh, really Inter have... interestingly there are claims that artificial intelligence has come now already, already is so sophisticated that big computers on with artificial intelligence programs they seems to be someone claimed to me i am not sure about that that they noticed that the computers talking to each other and developing in another language so that nobody can listen to them i am doubting about this report but let's assume this report is true then we have should be more worried about intelligent uh, artificial intelligence and it is even claimed that they, the the researcher were forced to unplug this round sound, if you, if any one of you, none of you is old enough to be, but maybe he has seen a replay of that. There was a movie in the 70s called Odyssey 2000 or something like that. Some people were lost in space and then the computer in the, in the, in the ship became, uh, became conscious and developed artificial intelligence to the tune that even the wires, if you want to go to go and unplug the wire, then he can move the wire. <laughs> and strangle you and things like that. <laughs> well, I think it's Odyssey 2000, it's called that, it was in the 70s, I show. So it's a shilling perspective. 
and they say, Odyssey 2000, because they expected that to be in the year 2000. We're now 2020, we are not even close to that. But if these stories that I hear from some people that it happened is not a fabrication, because it may be also a fabrication in the underground, and they claim the governments are covering that up and so on. This is like it's the same story with the UFOs that the government is covering up, etc., and so on. And still now with this really not very much persuasive there that is there may be some phenomena which are disturbing which are not understood probably the government may back up to prevent public panic that's possible there may be secret military experiments which people perceive as a ufo and the government is covering up because it's secret but it's really extraterrestrial coming from outside and the government is have have their bodies and made the some some dna testing and some covering up this is just just a bit a bit of a tall order it's a bit of a tall order. I'm not saying it's absolutely impossible. It, it could be. It could be in certain countries, but it's, especially in countries that most of the claims are in America. A country like America, they will be some whistleblower. They will be someone. This is a, this people. These people are cowboys. They are libertarian, in a, sometimes in a rough way. It's rather inconceivable that over the 50, 60 years, nobody came forward and exposed something like that. Even things like for the, like that, which were, people were doubting at the time, that it's a government man, that like like uh, the suicidal death of Marine Moro. It turned out that's not suicide because the man who, who killed her on order of CIA because she was, I think, uh, having a relation to Kennedy and they wanted, they were afraid that that uh, state secret may, may leak and so on, whatever the reason, they killed her. The man on his deathbed admitted that he is the one who killed him. And he admitted doing the same in 48 cases, 49 cases. So at least on the deathbed, someone had missed something. And he, he said clearly that he doesn't regret. He's serving the United States of America. <laughs> Even in face of death, he's not regretting. But that's not our, maybe he's, he's believing that the state of America is, is God's own land or the, uh, uh, the promised land, whatever he believes. But there will be something. There will be some leaking. There will be something like that. It will be uh, like Snowden. So it can't be over... Uh, even in the Soviet Union, they, they are whistleblower and people bailing out and, and exposing certain things. They will even that. It, it does, it's contradicts human nature that everyone to the last one will keep the secret and so on, especially in a relatively almost society like America. But, uh, but still, there may be something. There may be some, something came from space. There may be something strange, some strange construction, which may be of human origin. But it is, it's, it's, it's difficult really to, 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 to accept these things. It's really difficult. But let's go to the pandemic. So the maximum is there that they, ah, that's an opportunity. Opportunity for what? For control with masks and so on, with, uh, with immunization. I don't think immunization is a control unless this uh, G, 5G and so on uh, theory is there. This is, this is, there's no, as a physicist, I'll tell you, there's no. In addition, to make things worse, 5G being very short waves, it's very difficult penetrating through a skin to the depth of the human body. It does penetrate a bit, but because the shorter the wave, the more difficult. That's the reason that we are not transparent because the light waves are very short, so they cannot go through our body. Or they go through glass because, because the glass structure permits that. But in our body, it doesn't go. It reflects, and then you see only the skin. And it maybe go only a few micrometers. That's the reason UV radiation, UVB, uh, produces vitamin D under the skin from from uh, from uh, a cholesterol derivative. When one of the cholesterols can can be converted into cholesterol cholesterol which is D three, just few. But go let's just go deeper. Long waves go 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 through. But G G five G is specifically very short to carry, the one who know about that, to, to carry plenty of information, you need, that's the reason, for example, fiber optics, the, uh, carry more information than, than, uh, than, uh, than waves which are not in a, and, but, but, uh, but uh, because, it's, uh, because it's laser waves, either like blue or red and so on, and it's very short wave, plenty of frequency, and this allows you to do plenty of cutting down and ca carrying plenty of information, digitalization. And, uh, but light cannot be carried just loose, so it has to go through fiber optics. Otherwise, it will s strike against the walls and disappear. So it is absorbed by the air. It doesn't work. So they use something which doesn't absorb by the air, but sufficiently short uh, frequency, a short, a short, a short uh, wavelength and high frequency, so that it can carry plenty of information and still penetrate and go around. 
and they have a problem with, with 5G that it is, they still thinking how to deal with a problem that inside buildings, you, the reception will be miserable, much more miserable than 3G. So it's not very likely that it will penetrate deep enough to, to, to affect any, uh, any, any, any uh, a chip, unless it's a big chip buried under the skin or something like that for uh, following someone or something like that. That could be, like for example, they put a ship for when a terrorist or a criminal in some place, and if he try to run away or go out of the prescribed area, they send a signal, and this chip will, will start shaking him electrically or painfully and get back to your area, something like that. That could be envisaged, envisaged, but but not that one with with the, with the nanoparticle ships, chip level, chip in a nanoparticle level. This this will be having very basic functions. So you have also to get a bit of science in that. Not excluding that down the road, maybe something, but it will not, it will be triggered by something else than, than 5G, something else. It has to be something else. It may be triggered by like, for example, magnetic fields, you are passing in the airport or certain magnetic field and so on. That may be, but not 5G. It has to be something else, most likely. <clears throat> That's the reason some movies you see that, for example, there's an oppressive regime which dictates you should not get become pregnant and so on. And everywhere you go, everywhere there is like 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 a, like a, a, a detector. You can't go through the detector. And if a woman is pregnant without permission, they have everything on record. And then that woman pregnant, they try to apprehend her. And then you see in the movie she's running away and fight and so on, making very nice story. It's a nice movie. Uh, uh, that's 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 conceivable. That's possible. That, that's that's well possible. Going through such a gate with a device which can ah, there's a pregnancy. Check quickly with the database. That woman, according to her ID, everyone's ID at that time and so on. According to her, she, she's not supposed to be pregnant. She's she's become pregnant out of the permission of the state, which uh, regulate who gets pregnant or not, etc. And at which time, so she will be prosecuted. That could be. That's that's not far away. That's feasible in the coming few uh, decades. Sure, isn't, it, isn't it a case that people t tend to make a conclusion and then they try to look for anything that fits that? And it's yeah, often yeah, yeah. contradicting. It's often, the thing is, part of deciphering this is to have the relevant tools and to be critically analytical enough of this. But that, for example, you mentioned about science is part of science. I think it's a very important part. In fact, it's fundamental because when they start talking about waves and 5g it, they're almost thinking like this is a brand new it's, it's like it's like shooting a laser into someone's face it's something <laughs> brand new but it's this is within the laws of physics yeah yeah this and is physics as well and we know we know the general laws of physics and we know uh, the difference between uh, uh, long waves and short waves in carrying uh, in uh, in carrying for example if you want to communicate with with uh, with the submarines you have to use very long waves why because the sea sea water is salty and have ions, so short waves will not penetrate except like this. So to penetrate, most submarines now can go conveniently up to maybe six hundred meters. So for the wave to penetrate, it penetrates usually up to half wavelength. So you have to use a wave of like like one and a half kilometer. But these waves are very very messy and very difficult to deal with, and they have to have certain antennas in the land and so on. And also, the amount of information is very miserable. So you have to wait like half an hour or one hour to get the code for launching the nuclear attacks, <laughs> just to get the code, mm, 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 something like that. But it's the only way because you are deep in the sea, and this is it, it is not an option that you go above. The moment you go above, you may be detected by the enemy. And then the whole base was supposed to launch up to 16 nuclear missiles against the enemy. It's gone. It's finished. So it has to be down. So they use that. There's no, there's no way to overcome the physics. Only Allah can communicate immediately without these waves. <laughs> Anybody else has to use waves <laughs> because of the wavelength. But with this long wavelength, you can't communicate. And you may have seen in this uh, crimson, crimson, uh, this this uh, movie where. Uh, um, Denzel, uh, Denzel, um, what's the name of the, what's Denzel, the name of Denzel Washington, D. Denzel Washington in this Brems Red or something like that. When they have a dispute where they are under, under the sea level, they got an information that a nuclear war started and the, and the commander wanted to launch and Denzel objected, say we have to get, wait for confirmation. And then you say, you show you, I think this is a, a correct way how it works really in submarines, but the Americans are very liberal to show that to the public. And they were waiting ages for the tick, 
chick line by line takes minutes to come out because simply the the way we use it is just uh, simply uh, 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 having little information because of its enormous length and also uh, in addition it is uh, most likely more complicated because it's being encrypted and that makes it even worse so you have to wait more like half an hour or, or a, half a day to get the information anyway the, the movie ended nicely there was no war and alhamdulillah and no no launch and no catastrophe has happened but only by people there in the submarine really fighting against the commander and raiding each other so on, like a civil war in the submarine <laughs> it's a nice one you should if you could get an opportunity take a look to it but it gives you some shilly could it something like that happen oh the, at the end they say disclaimer from the american navy there are other safeguards which definitely will prevent something like that happening to pacify the people but at least such a mistake or mishap can happen that but in any case they have to wait for the confirmation and for that because of the long wave and also the high encryption making it even messier it takes hours until a small message that said confirmed or not confirmed just come out well obviously with the telephone in, in hours we could have even downloaded uh, uh, downloaded a gigabyte of information or a complete movie with a with a 5g or 3g and so on yeah so all of these things, people, they're not taking into consideration. Most common people, are, and there are some people who have the hobby to, to create such fake, fake stories and nonsensical things and fool the people. There some people have a hobby, either to, to satisfy some kind of feeling that I am superior to the others, I can take them for a ride, or to test the intelligence of the people like a hacker. Like many hackers, they just want to show that the systems are weak and they hack it with this purpose. They call them like like uh, detective hackers who show you yeah, your system is weak. We hacked it, and they offer their service for some of that. That's the reason many of these hackers have been employed by major corporation uh, to to protect their system and improve it. And your system is faulty, it's bad. And we can hack it. And there are other hackers who really have this this uh, twisted mentality or this psychological disease, like 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 which is not, which is. Uh, a fraction of human being will have evil mis either because they have been brought up in a, in, a, in a wrong way or they have some bad experience that they hate humanity or hate something like that and they want to take revenge all these kind of motivations and also the general lack of spirituality and, and piety increases the, the, the incidence of that in time past this the, 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 such event were much less because most people were pious and religious and believer and everyone have a barrier lying and so on is not good is not nice it will be the liar in a village you may find one liar and it's famous to be a liar but it's not very common nowadays almost every second person you meet uh, doesn't doesn't his day to make some lies unfortunately because morality general morality has sunk a little bit sunk considerably actually because the real barrier of that is really fear of allah and thinking of day of judgment and that's the reason the religious people tell you Make an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in the Quran, then most people will trip out. Nowadays, you can't tell more and he will put his hand on the Quran, he doesn't care, he doesn't believe in anything. So this is one problem also. So it's a sickness of the society. So we have some people who manufacture this. Uh, I, I mentioned last time the story about the, that someone said that uh, trying to, to prove the hadith, the, the false hadith in Bukhari that Adam was 60 feet in, in the sky. It's, it's obviously a Israelite story. We'll discuss that one day when we come to the creation of Adam, inshallah, in the tafsir. And then some uh, Russian atheist, I think, manufactured some Photoshop and so on, and a skeleton, and someone measuring a man standing there. Obviously, they projected the pictures. You know how to do that in Photoshop, various layers and projecting it, and measuring at a distance uh, 60 meters, 60 feet. <laughs> and our my friend, a medical doctor, believed that. I said, Come on, just wake up. This is manufactured. So he checked in the dark web of the Russian. He was in, in the Ukraine. He speaks Russian, and he found that it's a Russian invention. <laughs> some atheists were making mockery of, of some. Old Testament, or maybe Muslim, thing. and many atheists now make such make up such story that ah, new evidence for the Quran, which is not true, but it's obviously motivated by by ideology, because they want to show that the Quran is faulty or that the Muslim the Muslims are idiots, and they invent something, and then some Muslims adopted and broadcasted, and you find it, you receive tons of messages also of all kinds of things of these things. We should be a little bit more critical in that. It's, it's okay. Sometimes you will fall for some. Sometimes things may 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 
like someone told me recently, just I think a couple of days ago or one day ago, that uh, uh, because it's a lady actually, uh, uh, she hates the lockdown because she want to, because she has overweight and she wants to go for exercising. And then she received the message saying, uh, just now Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson decided to uh, decided to extend the lockdown until uh, Christmas day. See the link. So she was so upset, she clicked on the link. And the link, uh, having just a picture of someone making a, a, an indecent sign with a finger or something. <laughs> that's, <laughs> oh, that's, you could say that's more, more like a joke. You, you're pulling the leg of a friend or something like that. But sometimes it's more serious than that. It guides you to a, to, a, to a site, and the site is a, maybe an attack site or, or a site which will take, uh, take over your computer or something like that. Or it may give you give you like like a statement to uh, a, a, a fantastic statement about about uh, making money a certain opportunity or a government program and so on. You just send this amount of money and then you send the amount of money, and uh, and they take the money and run away. And people, some people will get fooled by that, which is natural. It can happen. So we have to be critical, but it does not mean that we are, we are say that we are completely. Uh, but what, 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 what? The most interesting thing that that these 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 uh, these conspiracy theories and these statements and these lies and so on can spread all over the world within within uh, within a uh, very short time. Actually, it's uh, the, the prophet. There's a prophet of Prophet I will check exactly the wording and so on. I will say, if you are in in the end of the times, في آخر الزمن. يكذب الرجل الكذبة في المشرق فتصل إلى المغرب مع غروب الشمس and reach مغرب the west the, the, across all the earth with the sunset this is a clear prophecy of, of uh, fast communication which at the time of it was impossible at the time of going from the far east to the far west will take on at best on horseback uh, or, 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 or uh, uh, postal system of the empires at the time empires with the established postal system it takes at least uh, two months and by, by just by, by camels and so on, it would take six months. So something spreading from far east to the west. In time past, the scholar said it's metaphorical, that spread very widely and very fast, but we know it's not metaphorical, it's literal. Someone fabricates a story in Wuhan, for example, and then the rest of the world knows about it by the, by the evening. Uh, a lie, but also news, true news and lie, but also the stress that lies will be. It's very, it's a double really, a double evidence for the prophethood that there will be lies and, and invented stories and claims which are not true, invented, but also truth will be spread. The same speed, because the speed of, uh, of information, speed, speed, uh, it doesn't, the speed of the information has nothing to do with the content of the information. It is just a mechanism uh, which will become available in the, in the far future. And, uh, but what he says is that lying and so on uh, and spreading lies will become more prevalent. People, piety and people, honesty and truthfulness will sink. In addition, that information speed will be massive. Oh, this is one, one of the evidences of prophethood of Prophet At the time, nobody could imagine that something will spread from here, will spread from east to west. At the time, when, when the, when the uh, I think we should conclude soon, inshallah, when, um, when the people of uh, when uh, Kisra was angry when he received the letter of Prophet and tore it away, then he sent to his commander in Yemen, this man who claims to be a prophet, sent two strong men to apprehend him. He thinks uh, he's living in an imperial world, apprehend him and take him and uh, ask him to cease and desist and give up with this nonsense. Otherwise, send him to me here in Persia. Uh, if he cease and desist with you in Yemen, that's fine, no need to send him. <laughs> So he sent two, obviously with a delegation and so on, and they went and up to Taif. In Taif, they asked about the prophet. So no, no, he's in Medina, he's not here. And the people of Taif at that time they were idol worshiper. They were jubilant. See, the king of kings, uh, uh, that was at the time uh, Fairuz, I think. Again, the king of kings is is going against Muhammad. Now we will get rid of him. Now we can stay worshiping the lad forever. So they went to Medina and they came to Rasulullah Sallallahu and then he received them nicely. Uh, and commented about their beers and uh, small comments and so on. And I said, okay, that's, that's what we say. We are, you are supposed to, the king of kings orders to come with us to the king of Yemen and prepare your answer in a nice answer to the king of Yemen. We don't need to send you to Persia. And we settled the matter there. <laughs> 
So I said, okay, I will I'll give you an answer tomorrow morning. Obviously, by Wahi, Jibril told him, wait until tomorrow morning. At that night, uh, uh, the Kestra was, uh, uh, was uh, assassinated by his own son. He was killed by his own son. And in the morning, he called them and then told them, uh, asked ask, ask him to be brought. So they brought to him in a, a little bit stiff way. So they were coming shivering what's happening. The man is, is going to kill us or do something to us and so on. Who knows what, what which principle of international law he respects or so on. And then, and they were shivering. So told them, your, uh, my Lord, because he said, my Lord commanded to, to leave the beards and because they said, our Lord has commanded us to shave. Our Lord, meaning Kisra, say, my Lord, come my Lord killed your Lord yesterday. And one of them say, watch your, your mouth. What you are saying is very grave. I said his own son killed him even. So what you're saying is very grave. If that is reported to the, uh, the deputy king in Yemen, then maybe an army will be coming with us. Saying, okay, don't, no problem. And he gave them gifts and so on <laughs> and sent them back to Yemen. So they arrived in Yemen told by uh, uh, the, the ruler there, I will remember his name down the road, and uh, uh, let's say, say, we have heard nothing, but uh, if, he, if it is true, if we get that news that he was, his son has killed him, then this can be only be known by, by a prophet because no way information can be go that fast whatsoever. Because even, even magician and so on and soothsayer never claim they get information that fast anyway. So it's impossible except and then just one or two days later, the news came from the son of the Qubad that uh, I have killed Kestra because he, he mistreated the armies. He did this, did this, and did it for the benefit of Persia, like any, any new king or any usurper. And uh, concerning, because he knew about the story of the prophet, concerning the man which my father told you to, to, to catch him and so on, leave him, don't touch him, leave him alone. He was afraid, leave him alone. Because this one was Christian and he has some maybe stories about the possible prophet and so on. So at the time, so until they go back to Yemen, that's about usual travel on coming back. That will be some like 20 days to one month. And the news from Persia until it comes, it's the same thing. So they arrived ahead the news. So the news from Persia couldn't have come to Medina in less than 15 days, but about new, the same day. And they recorded it, we said, watch the day, write it in your diary. And one of them is a writer, he's a recorder, he recorded it. And they checked the day uh, the, uh, of the, ex of the uh, execution of, of Kestra, it turns out. So at that time, the communication was just, just uh, this infeasible, impossible. For the people of that, it's impossible to imagine a communication coming uh, that fast. It's just, just, just beyond there except it's miraculous way. Anyway, I think we conclude. So that's, uh, that's so at least we benefited uh, some uh, other evidence of the Prophet that at the end of time, lie, lies, thick lies, which really are worth propagating all over the world will, will, will become prevalent, that a man will fabricate something in the East and it will be by the evening of the same day in the far west, so across the whole earth. And communication will be at that fast. Actually, it's faster than that, but until it spread and goes to news organization and they sorted it and double check it, and possibly he has made it so nice and so sophisticated that the check will pass. It take and then even the news agents will be fooled by the story and so on, and they broadcasted it. It takes it takes something like between two. 12 to 24 hours, usually, with all the sheikhs and so on, especially if the story is very fantastic. And, uh, and that's what we have now. So beware, there, there are fabricators all over the world who invent stories and imagine things deliberately just to, to, to have a big laugh about humanity or to prove some of their beliefs or project something in their imagination, the reality, all kind of motivation of lies are there. Some of this is just to have a mockery and story. And we see that continuously in the internet and things like that. And it can, some of it can, can, can fool everyone. Tash may remember there was someone claiming that this, uh, I remember that 10 years ago when I sent a picture which, which uh, someone claimed that this, that, uh, that plane which fell in the mountains of Bolivia or somewhere, that someone had a camera and the camera took a, a quick picture and was found, it turned out, that too, and the people always scattered in the air. It turns out it was 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 a shot from because Rush notes it, it was a shot from one of the movies, like the island or something like that. 
because he recognized some of the faces, but it looks genuine. A plane is going down and someone, someone uh, camera just uh, came loose, hit the wall and started taking shot one or two pictures and the camera survived the crash, which is very reasonable, seems very reasonable. And they thought this is really what has happened. That is really a genuine picture. But Raj noticed that it is a, a clip from, it is a picture from a clip from a movie. <laughs> so, so this is ongoing, <laughs> never ending. But it's very difficult to become immune. Because saying that the jail just that the jail will be the peak of a development Decli decline in uh, in spread of usury, uh, Jews becoming dominant force, for example, because the jail will come from Khorasan, according to Hadith, the correct Hadith of, of, of Abu Bakr, and also he comes in leading people who are having the same description like the Mongols, futsal unuf, flat nose, small eyes and their faces round like hammered shield. This description is given to the first wave of, uh, of Turk. There's a, the, in Arabic, the Mongols and are all and the Chinese are all called Turk. All they call the sons of Kanturai, Kartak, uh, son of Karkara. This is all genealogy. These are called Turks. And uh, the first wave is that what, what terrified uh, the Islamic world and toppled the Khilafah Abbasiyah. That one has, be, has come and it fulfilled the, promise, the prophecy as in, in the book of Tawheed. In the second part, it will come, inshallah. The second wave is the one coming with the Dajjal. The time between them is not given the hadith, but this was that. So this, most his army is like that, although he has plenty of Jews with him who are having obviously leadership and commanding position. And we know that the Jews are being settled and having dominance economically in Kazakhstan behind Khorasan. Khorasan, anything behind the two rivers, all the way to Uzbekistan, uh, Tajikistan, all of these area, all the way going to Mongolia, internal, external, this is all that area. And then the third wave, which is in the heel of the second wave, is uh, Yajuj and Majuj. They are also Turk, but most likely they are the Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and all this. Maybe they will have an alliance in the future. They will come most likely in revenge for the demise of the Dajjal, because he seemed to be their ally and associated with them very deeply somehow. So, so that's where they will come. Preparation, yes. Preparation, there will be economic situation, development, and so on. And, uh, and then he will emerge in a very complex way, starting he emerged as a Muslim who is defending the Prophet and the religion, and then slowly getting more extreme. Some extremists of Muslims join him and stick with his side, even if he claims to have sovereignty, and uh, he's a, that he's a prophet, then he's a divine being, claimed then ultimately there's some kind of divinity. If all these ahadith are taken, and I did not scrutinize <coughs> all of them, I did not scrutinize the Dajjal story, but seems to be very well and very firmly well established. So this will be the peak of a development. He's not there. And the, the, and the, amazingly, the, the claim that it's still alive as a summary or that Al Khudr is still alive, always refuted. There's one hadith of Prophet Islam, which is amazing actually, which settled these issues. The Prophet Islam, before he died, same night or few nights before, according to Jabir and other narration, he said, look at you this night, you see this night of yours, they say, no, no soul which has been, uh, which has, which has become alive or has been uh, taken birth, nafs manfusa, meaning human souls. It doesn't mean animals, most likely, but human souls. Ma min nafs manfusa will be a hundred years from now still alive. So for that specific date, with specifically, anyone born at that day or before that day, who is born at that day. At the moment, the Prophet made that concession, which we don't know, but cautiously people say it is the, the night of his death. Go a hundred years forward, and the people said, we take the years in the Islamic calendar, it's usually lunar years. Hundred lunar years, all who has been born before would have died exactly a hundred years or before. Nobody will survive that. So some people misunderstood that the Qiyamah would be there, and Ali ibn Abi Talib refuted them and showed them that they are idiots, they didn't understand the hadith. All the, so we have, why did the first time say that? It's by Wahi. Did he have any special attention? Did he have any information given so specifically about this issue? Maybe he has been given information that there will be people claiming in the future that some people have survived for thousands of years. This cut it short. Anyone born after that can't survive 100, 120 years, no problem about this. Anyone before that, including Samiri, the alleged uh, Antichrist, including Khidr, the alleged one uh, with whom Musa have the famous story. All of them, even if they were alive until until that time, 
100 years later. And as a matter of fact, nobody is known in history. The, the longest Sahabi known to have survived died actually in the 10th year of uh, 110 in Hijrah. That's uh, the last one to be known. And one in the, in the, in the countryside, a Bedouin, died in the year 103, 103 and 110. These are the last two which have uh, recorded as Sahaba and were known to be available uh, uh, at the death of Prophet Salam or born before that. That's only the only known person and no other. And we can't conclude by, 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 by conclusion that the hadith is correct and established and no reason to refute it. And that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah that nowhere in the world, not in China, not in India, not in, in the two Americas, nowhere, no one who was born that day or before could have stayed until uh, 100 lunar year after. So all the story of Samari and Dajjal and, and, and uh, being, uh, being the one alive or the one being cursed by Isa and going uh, roaming around until this is, this is very widespread by Christian and so on, all of these are, cannot be true. No one has survived. No one born before the, the death of Prophet Salam. Assuming that day we said that is the, the, the night of his death. Let's assume that. Last one, just to be in the cautious. Could not have been, none, none, none could have been at, at the year 111 uh, in uh, the uh, Rabi al Awal, 12 year Rabi al Awal. The last, the last day he could survive to. So 11 Rabi al Awal, anyone who was born before must have died before, at that day or before. 100 years exactly according to this hadith. Nafsim al Fusa. So this refutes many things. Another hadith refutes many things. So it's good for these things, since these conspiracy theories and these theories are spreading all over, all over the net and so on. It's speculative theories. Some people speculate who is the Islamist as don't touch me, the one, the Samiri, or punished, but that he has a skin disease. Now, if anybody touch him, he feels the pain. So he said, don't touch me, don't, don't come close to me, and so on, that he is running all. And some stories claim that he was alive at the time of Isa, and he continued alive until now. And there's even a, mo a movie that he is alive now as a priest and things like that. All of this is, uh, can't be, it's impossible. It's all imagination. It's a very nice speculation. You can let your fantasy run and maybe create a nice movie around it, but it has nothing to do with the reality. Nobody born before the death of the Prophet could have survived 100 years with certitude. So that's one aspect of the, the Dajjal. The Dajjal is still down the road. Maybe he's, he's starting to develop in, in, in Kazakhstan because the development is good. Most economy there are under Jewish control and the people there are Turks. No, it's small eyes and so on. So the, the stage is being prepared. But that's it. So that's, I, I think it's, I know it's, it's very difficult, but uh, the, this, always the question say, what is the benefit of the guys in, 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 in yeah, they may say, oh, this is good op op occasion to control the people, to, to subdue them, to en enact new laws that we can pursue the people, we can jump in their houses and check who is with you why you are more than three person things that yeah that's that they will benefit from it in that and they will try to enact in there under the pretext and that's very difficult too but it's, it's unlikely that these laws will remain after the pandemic and then if that's their benefit then the economic collapse is not in their benefit will will drain all the financial resources and destroy them that's a problem and also the the vaccine is countering that so this is this is all i think this is all but uh, definitely regimes and, and media and so on in the West, especially uh, to blame because they have been, they have been generally quite dishonest and covering up for many things and fooling the general public and uh, uh, any, anyone uh, rebelling against that or moving against that, or they try to, think, to make him a conspiracy theorist or a terrorist <clears throat> or mentally deranged, whatever they declare him. Although some, the pe many of these people who are rebelling or who are objecting have a valid reason and they need really a valid uh, display of evidences in a honest and clear way. It's not done. And that's, that's, that's increases and inflames the conspiracy theories. So these mean Western media, and all these governments, they are covering something up, definitely. And that's what makes the people, and they are not honest, and they are lying to the people. But anyway, it's well known now that politicians are liars. It is, is, is is has become like a public knowledge, and this is not good. 
and this is one well, this is well, that's the reason Rasul said that the, the the three where Allah will not look at the day of judgment and will not by, uh, uh, purify them and they will he will punish them most severely. Malikun Kadab, a lying king. Malik means he's the one who has authority and power and ownership. And he lies because there's no reason. If you have authority and ownership, you should have all the reason to be honest and forthright. But the one who lies is definitely the most despicable human being. Zani, an old man who commits zina. A young man may okay, understand that the, the sexual drive is very strong, that the blood is hot, but a man who's, who has, whose hair has become gray, what's the motivation for zina? This is, this is very despicable. A poor man or a man, one who is dependent upon others and he's still arrogant, <laughs> blown up. You are dependent, عائل. you are, you are poor, you are dependent upon others, support, and, above, and then you still show arrogance. Does not mean you should be submissive and low, but I should I should at least show humility and and reasonability, not being arrogant and blown up as if you as if you have power and authority, which you don't have. So these three types. Now this this is the time of these types are prevalent everywhere nowadays, unfortunately, especially the Malik, the rulers who are liars. These are the Malik al -Kadab. And they miss they miss they miss this public life. But that's the worst one. It's for mission number one. That's the worst one will not be looked at by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be punished most severely because they miss the, miss the public life, miss the people mind, miss the uh, people livelihood. They make the society at least asynchronous and and and, uh, and confrontation society very prevalent, leading to, to upheavals and problems. But this is also because they, and also Another reason is that because they rule with the, not with what Allah has revealed. Allah says, any, any people who do not rule with that what Allah has revealed, they will be conflict and bloodshed. Because the only thing which makes the people satisfied and accept is that when they rule with what Allah has revealed. That would include justice and could also they, they know that's what Allah has revealed and that's what we are ruled with and they are satisfied. They will submit to it. Anything else will lead to rebellion, conflict, bloodshed and dissent and um, uh, violent dissent even. So that's, 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 I think that's the source of the problem, the deep source of the problem. The prevalent ideologies of, uh, and statecraft is, is, not, is not the one which will give deep satisfaction and conviction to human beings. And there's no alternative ideology in the, in the field, active one. There's theoretically in, in the, deep in the books, but nothing in the reality. Unfortunately, maybe we'll be we'll be working to get some of that in somewhere in some reality. Okay, I think so. We 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 did I think a little bit more excessive than usual, but I hope that we try to give just a still still is a, is, is a major order to to uh, go through conspiracy theories and analyze them and uh, and uh, uh, not discount every conspiracy theory and not accept every conspiracy. Theory. Where to find the middle ground? only very rational discourse and taking all evidences on board. And concerning issues of the future and eschatology and so on, is the best is to go to the hadith and scrutinize them. Like for example, Umran Hussein, many of his things has turned out to be wrong because he does not scrutinize the hadith properly. And he's very selective, doesn't work this way. You have to be comprehensive. You have to take all evidences, try to scrutinize them, find the proper wording, what has been done, and what is reliable, etc what can be regarded as reliable and what cannot be. And also to, to concerning process, the future and so on, you have to be very worried about many relations, which seems to be just copying uh, parts of Daniel or something like that. Now, Daniel may have been also prophesied things for the later generation, but most of his prophecies are going actually for Bani Israel until the time of the coming of their Messiah, not uh, to our time, most likely, maybe something until the coming of the Messiah, maybe, but it doesn't go up, up to the end of time, most likely. And some, some Muslims in, in the first uh, century and second may have read them and translated them and re reworked them in the, in the Islamic context, which is, uh, which is not correct because this is not what the prophecy was about. It's, a, it's a, an ijtihad as best, and this is not binding. So many of these also eschatological issues are uh, relatively dangerous. That's the reason I, I don't like to enter in them because without really doing substantive research, which I don't have the time and the energy to do. Also, Sheikh, you, you also mentioned uh, the narration about uh, Abu Huraira having two bags, one of them 
you would strike, you would uh, see yeah. me by the neck. Say, so, but he, uh, he mentioned something. He says, if I tell you that you will kill the grandson of your prophet and you will do this and this, would you have believed me? So it's one of them that he has a prophecy about. And that's the reason he was always supplicating, Allah, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let him die before the, before 60, the year 60. Knowing after 60 major catastrophes and calamity will happen. <laughs> the point is that even in taking some of these narrations, which talk about the prophecy as qati or something to build something and even build an entire strategy around is inherently flawed if that is not part of the protected zikr. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that narration, for example, about um, if you want to, you know, if you want to end on that, just just to sort of preempt some of these kind of questions, uh, the narration around what constitutes protected zikr and what isn't, mm -hmm. if you like. So you you know, in, in previous halakat, you mentioned yeah. about yeah, the protected zikr is the Quran and the Sunnah in itself. Now the question. The protection of the Sunnah is that the, the, all what is called Sunnah, and, uh, the reports and narration and so on, uh, 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 nothing fabricated can sneak there without being detected forever, and nothing can be lost so that will not be found forever. That's, that's the only protection. But uh, what we have in the bag called Sunnah uh, contains the fabricated, contains the weak, contains the re reformulation, which is not ma'asum, uh, not, not protected, not, not unfallible wording of the Prophet So we have to check all the wordings and see which wording is the original one, if, if any, or which one is close, as close as the original one. So that's that's it. So, uh, so that's the meaning of the protection of the Sunnah. While the protection of the record of the Quran, the part of the record which is the Quran, that's a protection word to word letter for letter. But not, not like that for Sunnah. It's in its all totality that nothing can be lost forever and nothing can sneak in and regarded as Sunnah, which is fabricated forever. Someone, if someone is fooled by a hadith and think it's correct, like for example, hadith about the size of Adam being 60 feet in, 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 in Bukhari. Bukhari was fooled regarding that's a Sahih because he regarded going to Abu Huraira and Abu Huraira is trustworthy. But he did not envisage that Abu Huraira may have heard it from the from Kaab al Ahbar or some people of the book, and it uh, in, uh, interfered in his mind with the statement of the Prophet And he thought it's a he thought genuinely, honestly, that it's a prophetic statement. But we know from other postulation it cannot be a prophetic statement. But we come to the creation of Adam and some issues related to that and things like that. And one, one way to, to avoid that is to have the narration from another Sahabi and we prove the independence because we should, we should be sure that the Sahabi did not take from Abu Huraira or from the other Sahabi of that because Sahaba narrates from each other. Like for example, one Sahabi narrates a story from Allah Salaam, that he was present and something happened. Another Sahabi that he was present and the same thing happened, maybe slightly modified, shows the various points of view, but the core is the same. That's a very strong evidence corroboration one single sahabi there's no guarantee that it didn't interfere in his mind with some kind of his israelite story or uh, some other story or that he took it from another sahabi who himself took it from a Israelite story he said just qala rasulullah but even in the extreme case that the wording indicate that he heard the direct from like the hadith in muslim which was scholars in time past already argued against is that i was standing and he took my hand and said uh, Allah created the earth on the day of Sabbath, this, this Ahad, and mentioned the day in the day names. And then the only way they, they refuted that is that uh, it mentioned the creation in seven days, while the Quran says it's six days. Say, ah, there must be some error there. Uh, it can't be from that. It, 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 it's somehow in it's some, something as real Israelite or Kaab al Ahbar narration. And it interfered in the, in the Bukhari's mind with some other hadith of the Prophet when he counted his finger something else or something similar, but not this one. They detected that because the number seven and six do not, do not match, luckily. For example. So it needs it needs hard work. So what Mara Hussein is doing is not really sufficiently hard work. He is completely not uh, either not qualified or not willing to really scrutinize the Sunnah and uh, and uh, uh, sort the weed from the shaft. It's not, it doesn't seem to be careful. That's the reason some of his predictions, some of his statements are just simply wrong. Blatantly wrong. Anyway, here there will be many issues uh, coming along the when in the tafsir and also in the events and so on, which we uh, 
but I see that uh, unfortunately nobody, uh, the people tend to, for example, you find a video about uh, Samiri and so on, relying on the, in the Quran, the Salami Sas, without mentioning that he died or not died, and then relying on some maybe Israelite story and the story, the one that uh, Isa cares that he will wait until he comes back and all of these things and say, this is a Dajjal and mix all those stories without scrutinizing all the stories of the Dajjal. Nobody is sitting in And some of the older, uh, uh, Ibn Kathir did some work in the Bidaya and Nihaya. In the Nihaya, he discussed these. Uh, uh, that's what maybe the best discussion we have in, in his history. Maybe I should go through that and try to improve on it and make uh, make more comprehensive analysis and look at it from a modern, more rational and critical point of view because in Kathir, although he's, he's trying to be as rational as he can, but he cannot he is a son of his own time and the time that people were assuming that these Ahadith Sahih and Bukhari and Muslim were almost uh, perfect and uh, nobody should criticize anything and so on. Oh, we need uh, to go to the Nihaya for Ibn Kathir and do another review and clean some of the mistakes. But he did some the, the, he did a considerable groundwork. We need to build upon that and expand and uh, scrutinize rationally and so on and see what, what what where we get with this inshallah. when we get some time inshallah for that anyway, I think we we, we did exceed I think the usual time considerably we just barely catch Asr. so we, we still we, we stop here inshallah. أترم بدين في ربا نبلاء وطئت خطاه وطئت خطاه منازل العلياء صابته أيدي المخلصين لآلئا شاعت لنا بالخير والنعماء صابته أيدي المخلصين لآلئا شاعت لنا بالخير والنعماء شاعت لنا بالخير والنعماء جيل أبا إلا الكتاب له هدى يمضي به للقمة الشماء ولواء خير المرسلين له سنا أكرم به من معلم ولواء جيل أبا إلا الكتاب له هدى يمضي به للقمة الشماء ولواء خير المرسلين له سنا أكرم به من معلم ولواء أكرم به من معلم ولواء أكرم بجيل أكرم بجيل في ربا نبلاء وطئت خطاه وطئت خطاه منازل العلياء أكرم بجيل أكرم بجيل في ربا نبلاء وطئت خطاه وطئت خطاه منازل العلياء لا تنسى الإعجاب والاشتراك في القناة